holy, holy, holy. Hey, how's it guys? Uh, how is everyone? <laughs> I hope we are all having a fantastic evening. Um, we are going to be talking about a subject that is very... Hello, Dr. Tabo. Uh, so good to have you here. Uh, for me, this is one of those very um, important subject matters. Um, the role of men in our society. Um, what is a man? Uh, but today we're going to be talking about what it is. Um, um, how are we unmasking the modern, the modern man? Um, it's a subject very close to my heart because um, as men, we have uh, serious challenges that we have to deal with. Um, but we do need uh, women as well to be, um, to be with us in this journey because we have uh, serious challenges. You know, some of us didn't have, um, didn't have um, role models when we grew up. Um, so we sort of struggle when it comes to um, becoming men, becoming husbands, uh, becoming, uh, um, becoming role models in society. Um, some of us don't know how to be good lovers. Um, so we do need to work with each other. Um, I personally hate the issue of um, uh, gender wars. You know, you find people fighting, um, uh, hating on each other. I, I, um, so, so this is one of those efforts where we are going to, to be talking as men. You know, um, I'm going to be talking to Ryle. Big guy. <laughs> yeah, brother. I'm good, man. How, How are you doing? Hey, I'm great. What's happening behind you? Is it is it uh, is it burning? <laughs> ah, <laughs> into the intimate side of my life here, man. Raw behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> it explains your it explains your name, uh, Nature Boy. Yeah, that's the one. That's of course. I'm I'm being true to my nature. I just hope it doesn't look like devil horns when I speak. I promise I'm <laughs> I'm <here> for good. <laughs> somebody said somebody just said they have a hot like a heat <laughs> They say you are hot referring to you. I uh, no, it means you. I'm too old for that. <laughs> How are you man? That's good, and 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 I was uh, just I'm still uh, uh, really buzzing with our conversation we had today on the show. Yeah. I got such good responses from everybody that yeah. tuned in. Um, I think just also a, a fresh conversation that we're having, and I didn't think the impact would be so big for people yeah. like you and I, who never mind the media and the brand space we play in, but just in the everyday space as human beings. Um, yeah. It, it, seems like it was quite a, a, a promising thing for people to hear. So uh, I'm glad we get to continue the conversation right now. I'm really looking forward to this. And, and especially, I don't know what you, you, you mentioned to everybody that's watching right now, but uh, I know we've got a competition running. So those best comments yeah. are going to be able to win a prize, which is quite cool. Um, yeah. But just for me to be able to chat to you about defining the modern man, it, it's something I'm just really grateful for right now. And, and hello to everybody that's joined the live. What's up? Hope you're having a beautiful evening. Thanks for joining us. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Definitely. We're going to be giving away a hamper. Uh, but uh, after our conversation, we're going to be asking um, our viewers, uh, how have you embraced the modern men? Um, welcome, women, to this live because it's a, it's a women's month. You know, I've been thinking uh, how best to give a beautiful gift. What best gift you can give to women in a women's month other than for us men to be, to be good men, you know? Um, it's the best gift we can give to humanity for us to be uh, genuine men, to be loving men, to be kind men, um, and to stop a whole lot of uh, nonsense that we do as men, like gender-based violence, um, you know? So there's, um, there's a lot that we... Let, let's get to our conversation for the day. <laughs> what would you like? What would you like? I had a lot of questions uh, that came through yeah. online as well. I just wrote yes, a few yes. down here. Um, the, the biggest one for me, I mean, to kind of kick it off, and maybe I can ask you this. It's yeah. something we spoke about on the show. And I think, especially in this day and age, when it comes to what does it mean to be a man? I think that would be my first question to you, just to maybe uh, 
get everybody else that's joined right now. What does it mean yeah. to you, uh, Moose, especially to to be a modern man in this day and age? You know, I th I think this is so important because um um a lot of women also are struggling with how to deal with us as 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 men as modern men in this age because um women today are a different breed of women than our mothers were than our great grandmothers were so for me a, a modern man is 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 a lover um what identifies a modern man is a man who takes care of his family um you, you know whenever I, i get home my wife always says she is happy to see how the daughters my daughters uh, look forward to seeing me you know because they know i love them because i show them love so for me a modern man is unlike our grandfathers my my grandfather we used to think he was a lion because we we, we used to think Uti, when when your when your grandfather comes home everybody must move you must just show that you are not just seated down you know but uh, but uh, today we are those kind of men that our kids run to you know uh, when my daughters have a problem they need to come to me they need to come and say baba how how uh, uh, how do i deal with the, uh, such and such a situation because if we are not there for our children if we are not there for our wives then our children will go elsewhere to look for solutions that they would have otherwise found in us so for me a, a modern man is is available a modern man is a man that um is is emotionally available Uh, sometimes as men we are we are there at home but we are not there you know sometimes we go out on weekends to spend time with amajita with amajens and we sort of ignore our families you know so so for me a modern man is is a man that is emotionally available um instead of always being seen to be emotionally unavailable a man doesn't cry and and and, and all that but a man today is is sensitive sensitive to his own needs and to the needs of those around him. I agree with you so much, man. And especially when, when you speak about that, that conversation about your grandfather as well, that's what I grew yeah. up with with my dad. He was yeah. old school, stern, strict. Um, not the, the kind that you go and run and hug. You know what I mean? That was maybe you yeah. speak to mom about the, the emotional stuff and dad was all about the strict, stern stuff. So growing up it's really confusing for me when when you feel certain feelings but all you know is that as a man you don't express, express those feelings um what i see around me as a man in the commas is someone that's just continually being strong and and doesn't have uh, this, this empathetic side to them and that to me i i can't this and make it because i feel like a man but yeah i'm one that i have feelings and i don't want to not express that um and and, and the, the the comparison i draw with you um and and me uh was is that you blessed enough to have a family i'm i'm kind of striving towards that goal and towards potentially being blessed to have that but for me in in, in my engagement especially as a man and a man dealing with a woman i I've, i've learned so much in my upbringing now that what i thought was uh being stern and cool was was not the kind of man I wanted to be. I couldn't resonate to that. And number two, it wasn't working when I was engaging with women either. Uh, really enough, I started to figure out through the hard way that women wanted to maybe hear how you felt. They wanted to know what your opinion was to something. But more than anything, the minute I started listening, that changed the whole game. Just being a man that can actually listen and and voice anyone's concern and actually listen with your heart and not just your ears and say it's going to be okay but actually rationalize that for me is something i think in this day and age where we are such emotional beings we have so yeah. much a uh, feeling and for so many reasons i mean we go through so much as it is how do we deal with it if we're not going to express that and and yeah. for me as a man i think it's Uh, I used to think that I was being weak for feeling. I thought that I was not being a real man because I wanted to talk to other people about something I'm struggling with. And yeah. and more men and, and and gents like you when I speak about that makes makes me feel that this is the normal thing. Why why are we not doing this as a everyday sort of coping mechanism as a support structure to create a community? So for me the modern day man is that it's 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 one that open to conversation open to listening and and to the fact that the world is changing and so is everybody else <laughs> yeah yeah and you know and uh, I mean? speaking of which 
Mm. And, and, and speaking of which, uh, the challenges that we face as men, um, personally, I think one of the challenges is that as, as guys, we sometimes get too playful. If I come to you and say, I've got this and that problem with my woman or with my kids or at work, often we laugh at each other. You know, you'll find that uh, I've got about six or seven friends, but I don't trust them with my deep and e sensitive emotional part of me, you know? So what, what, what are some of your challenges that you face as, as a modern man? I love that. And that's definitely one of them. But it's uh, the challenge of knowing that when I speak to another man, it's a safe space that I'm going to be heard the way I want to be heard. Um, yeah. Apart from that, uh, challenges for me is also breaking the narrative because yeah. coming from this old school paradigm of these are the rules, this is what's expected, and now being in this world where there aren't actually any rules, provided that you just respect someone as a human being, uh, regardless of their sex, it shouldn't make a difference. And now transitioning with that, uh, that has given me more guidance than the role of being a man. Because when, yeah. I, when I detract from that and actually take a bigger perspective on it and say, wait, before I even want to define being a man, what does it mean to be a human being? Yeah. That has yeah. now allowed me to actually then <clears throat> solidify what being a man is. And yeah. we have certain variations to, uh, let's say, a woman, obviously. Um, but I think we are becoming so much more fluid in our roles that for me, it's, it's the challenge is um, finding joy in cleaning the house with your partner, cleaning yeah. the dishes. You know, the, the, the mundane things that wouldn't, wouldn't used to be tasks orientated with guys, those are things that I'm, I'm, I'm almost struggling also to, to do myself because I come from a, a, an upbringing where the man had his role and the woman had their role. They didn't kind of do it together. Yeah. So, so the role was clear -cut. I'm struggling to do the dishes because <laughs> I'm not used to that. I, I, I'm used to doing the hard labor and the craft outside yeah. and my chores were picking up the dog poo and things like that, you know? So yeah. realizing that it's okay to do the dishes and I should be comfortable with that, <laughs> um, yeah. for lack of a better example, man. Yeah. Well, what, what do you find I, I, to, to, to be tough on your side? I, I think as a man uh, in 2021, um, one of our biggest challenges, now I'm speaking about us men in general, I think one of our toughest uh, challenges that we, we, we have to admit this, because in, in order to heal a wound, you need to dress it, you know? and remove all the parts there, uh, which is a very uh, a painful process. But uh, let's face it, we, most of us men, we have a challenge with uh, how to deal with a powerful woman. You know, we, we, we still have a challenge on, because we grew up watching our fathers getting away with murder uh, uh, with, when it came to our mothers. But um, with modern women, we, we, they, they, they ask questions. Why, why are you saying we should do that, you know? Um, as a man in, in, in my house, when I make money, the first thing I think about are the rims for my car. You know, I'm thinking about buying the most expensive perfume, buying that Louis Vuitton jacket, you know. But my wife would be thinking, what about you get the couches? And I get angry because, you know, she's reasoning. Uh, whereas my father would say, I'm buying a car, that's it. But my, our women are asking questions, valid questions for that matter. And, and their contribution to a relationship and to a home um, is a very is a very valid one. So I, I think some of our challenges as men is is how do we submit um, to our women? Um, the issue of submission, I love it because <laughs> most of the time we even quote the Bible and say the Bible says we must women must submit. But if you look at what the Bible is saying, the Bible is saying that we must submit to one another, you know. And then it, it further says women submit to your men, and then it says men love your women. Now. For me, uh, uh, when, it came, when it comes to uh, the instruction that we got from God as men, I think it's tougher to love than it is to submit. It's very easy to submit, to just say, okay, fine. But to love, uh, how, how do you love when you're angry? You know, how do you love when your wife has squandered money and bought like uh, 10,000 rands weave? You know, uh, the, according to the instruction that we have been given, it says you love her even though she has done so... Uh, um, a, a very bad thing at home, you know? So I, I, I think for me, one of the biggest challenges that I have is submitting, is finally submitting to a lot of sense that my wife is speaking, that my mother is speaking, you know? And, and, and also how do we disrespect women as men when we come from them? 
it is women who took care of us when we were younger, who reared us, you know, who breastfed us, who cleaned us. And then how do we then turn around and say the opinion of the woman doesn't matter? You know, so I, I think one of the biggest challenges that we have as men that we need to address is how do we submit to our women as much as it is important for our women as well to submit to us, you know. But one of the biggest challenges that uh, I think we have as men that I also have is, is the issue of headship. What does it mean to be a head in the family? What does it mean to be a leader in the family? What do I need to do? What if my woman is stronger than me emotionally and spiritually and mentally? You know, so how do I have the last word when she's always speaking sense? So uh, um, that this is where for me, I find it very important where if we want to change the narrative, then we are the generation that needs to sacrifice and, 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 and learn what it means to be the head of the family. Well, it, it doesn't mean I have the last word, but it means we sit together with my wife. What is our vision as a family? Well, where are we going? Where do you see this family going? Where do you see your, your kids going in, in the next five, 10 years? So I, I think for me, it's headship. Where it is important is for us to show leadership for our kids. You know, how I re <laughs> what I call my wife today is what I used to hear my, fa my grandfather calling my grandmother. Um, my grandfather used to love saying Mgami, meaning my wife, you know, and the way he said it, he said it with such joy. So I, I see that happening with me because I saw somebody doing it. So if we want to change the narrative and we want to see our kids doing better, we are the generation that needs to show them how to be a, a, a good man today. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Love that. I, I think... And one thing I must just add to what you're saying and something I've definitely noticed and I, and I love the change is women are becoming more outspoken. They're not yeah. dealing with, excuse my language, the, the BS that guys are, are putting and giving to them nowadays. I see yeah. women as, as strong. They, they have more independence. And for a lot of guys, I think that's actually more intimidating that they, than they want to admit. Um because a lot of guys also have insecurities that they're not necessarily wanting to show. So they'll rather put this facade or this mask on and I'm cool yeah. or, or act tough or act a certain way. Um, but I think women are, are the, the modern day woman is changing and, and they're privy to that. They see through all that BS. So for me, I think uh, I love what you're saying, especially when it comes to really uh, what we get away with and, and how we should be treating our partners. It, it, the game has completely changed. Uh, the, the, whatever you thought and saw in the old day movies, that, that no longer is the case. Um, it, it's a partnership. I, I like how you mentioned that. I, I think that's so, so true. And it's a, a continually working relationship that should just get better and better if we can communicate it. And I think for a lot of guys and a lot of guys listening, I love how you say that, that we can be the change. We can be the yeah. thing that other people look to and see, oh, there's a different way. We don't have to cat call and whistle out to women. We can actually treat them with respect and actually realize that they're human beings. And if anything, far better than us. <laughs> We've got a lot to learn from them, and we should. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I love that. Um, how do you see uh, a question for me that, that often comes up is, is, you know, we have this very really gender neutral world that we live in as well. So... Yeah. Living in a gender equal world, I think, uh, on that note, is, is by any chance just the most important thing right now. Um, it, it touches on the conversation, and every, every point that you make as well, it just it, that comes back to mind. It's uh, yeah. how would I like to be treated? Is how yes, I should be yes. treating my partner? Yes, yes. Simple yes. as that. You, you mentioned the Bible, and, and most divine scripture mentions treat thy neighbor like you would yourself, love thy neighbor. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's in all the commandments, whether I was uh, Islamic, Christian, Judaism, it doesn't matter. It's all there. It's, it's that mutual respect that allows for growth and real true commitment to me, man. So I think you're yeah. nailing it on yeah. the end there. I love that. You know, if, if you listen and pay attention, there's a, there's a narrative out there that uh, women are starting to say. I've been seeing it in, in, in a lot of um, WhatsApp updates and, and, and Instagram. You know, women are beginning to say, I don't want to be a strong woman. I don't want to be a tough woman. You know, I don't want to be that independent woman. woman.
and to where women are saying men are useless, men are dogs, men are trash, and all those things. But I think we are moving in a direction that says where women are saying, I don't want to be a strong woman, but I want to be that woman that needs my man. Uh, Mina, from my experience, I need my woman. I need my wife. Um, what, when I look at what, the, in, what, what, what my wife brought into my life, as that yeah, from that young man who, who was hip and happening, I thought I was all about the style. I was all about the perfumes. I thought I was all about it, dressing nice. But when she came into my life, she made me realize that, dude, you cannot be telling me about your, your, your latest perfume when you are sitting on plastic chairs, for example, you know? So there is, there is a very important aspect that a woman brings in a man's life. So instead of fighting with each other personally, I think it is time that we are beginning to realize that uh, women are beginning to realize that they don't need to be strong women that don't need a man, but we, are, we, we need each other. We are interdependent, you know? So, but from us men, I think one of the things that we need to realize is that um, women are our equal uh, 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 partners. The moment you begin to accept that your wife is your equal partner, your sisters are as important in a family meeting as your opinion is, I think that's where our healing begins. You know, so, so, so when, we, when, when I begin to say in a family meeting, in my family, I begin to say, Koskaz, uh, what do you think? Um, okay, we've got 20,000 rands in the account. Uh, what, 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 what do you think we should do with this money? I think you should buy paint. Oh, I think you should buy new chairs. I know, I, I, I wanted to change my tires. Your tires can wait. Let's do that. So there's, 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 there's progression that comes with listening to one another and treating our uh, uh, women in the society as equal partners. We need to get to a point where we trust the woman as a president in this country, where we trust women with uh, top positions in companies instead of always giving them some compromised uh, positions. So we are the ones that need to change that narrative by accepting that women are our equal partners and say that not to be politically correct um, and say that not because we are on Instagram live, but we need to have a deep conviction that we need the opinion of women as much as we need uh, the opinions of men. For example, women are very intuitive. Women... Um, my wife remembers what my daughter was wearing 15 years ago when we went to a wedding. All I remember is that we went to Devon for a party, but my wife remembers what we ate along the way, you know. So all of those details, it is, it is how God has keyed it in, in our DNA. There are, there's a beautiful aspect that a woman brings into a man's life. And there's a beautiful aspect that a man brings into a woman's life. So we are interdependent. We need one another instead of always fighting and thinking we don't need one another. No, I, I couldn't say it any better, man. I mean, what's the world where your mind versus two minds towards the same goal? Which one would you prefer? It's like you have an extra set of eyes, an extra, an extra person looking out for you, uh, your compadre, yeah. your partner in crime, two birds killing one stone. I mean, it, it, there's so much benefit to it. And I think if we see it for what it just actually is, like you said, it would make things so much easier. Half the effort for twice the return on the investment. Um, and you know the interesting uh, part as well, uh, uh, Ryle, is, is that when, when a man and a woman come together in a relationship, when I date someone, I need to know what is their vision for life? What do you want out of life? What are you trying to accomplish? What are your goals? What are your deepest fears? So that as I get into this relationship with you, I help you become better. Um, I, I hold you accountable. If I see that you are slacking, you are not getting up to study anymore. I'm like, hey, what? what's going on? You are not studying, you know? So I'm accountable to you and you are accountable to me. So we must be, uh, you can't have someone building you if you don't trust them, if you don't treat them as your equal partner. So if we are to come together in a, in, in a, in a, in a relationship, then it must be a, a relationship of, a, of an equal companionship where we mutually love and respect one another. You know, somebody said something very interesting uh, not so long ago yeah, on the comments. He said, it's very difficult to love when you are ahead. These are some of the challenges that uh, uh, people out there are facing. You know, I talk to a lot of young people in, in the organizations there where I'm, I'm interacting with them. People are really hurt out there. You know, it, it, it's um, motivational speaking doesn't help. People need true and real solutions. So, but how do, how do you then, how, how do you then, love when you are hurt. So I, I, personally, I believe that 
uh, like I was saying earlier on, that in order to heal your wounds, you need to confront them. Because if you have old hurts that you haven't dealt with, you are going to have to deal with them in your relationships. Sometimes we act uh, out of hurt from previous relationships. Maybe my mother didn't care for me when I was younger, so I'm, I've got that craving of my mother's love. But how, I, how it comes out in my relationships, it comes out in a way that, uh, that causes hurt to my woman. So I, I, I think maybe to answer you, my brother, I would say you have to confront uh, that anger. Find out what is the gist what is the source of that anger? Where does it come from? Did somebody hurt you? Uh, are you therefore hurting other people in your relationships just because you are trying to deal with a past hurt? Yeah. Maybe, maybe I can ask you this question because I love what you're saying and, and we're speaking about this now and, and I think it's one thing speaking about it but it's another thing actually doing it because yeah. like that comment you mentioned about anger, it yeah. let's be honest, I think there's a lot of emotion us as males potentially suppress because we don't yeah. find the space or the person to really express it with. And if we're not open with our partner and don't have that communication, yeah. it sits inside you and then it becomes a potential violent outburst or I express yeah. it in a negative or an angry way. So I love what you're saying there. And I, I also think that it, 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 it's, it's so good to be able to get that feminine approach and yeah. and not even necessarily from a female. This could even be a male. This could be anyone that has that intuitive side to to see both sides of the party. And and often as men we get caught up in that emotion, and yeah. uh, not many wise decisions ever come from uh, from from mentioning that. So I, I think so so true again and so so pertinent. I was reading through the comments as you were talking. Yeah, a lot of yeah. people talking about. Uh, uh, things like uh, feminism and how it gets taken out of context. And I definitely agree with that. And and for us, and I think about this conversation that we're having right now, we could essentially take out the word man and woman out of this completely and just be talking about human beings here. Because yeah. regardless of the sex, even for me, I just feel like we're in this day and age now where any connection is possible and it should be respected. Provided that both parties respect each other, I'm for that. I, yeah. I'm, I'm all for that. I support that. So yeah. whether you're one side of the partner, and, 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 and nowadays to me, I've seen men that, that aren't as masculine as you potentially see. They still are interested in females or potentially in a male. It doesn't really matter, but they are blessed with that insight, and that's their strength. And yeah. You and I as men, we have our strengths and within, within everybody they have that strength. And it's yeah. only going to be beneficial if we bring that to the party and allow that to be something that grows as opposed to use my strength to suppress something. I mean, yeah. and that's what we see so often with that emotion that, that doesn't get expressed properly. So, yeah, so true. I, I'm really loving the comments here with that, that everyone's been saying. I, I saw one as well that just said, at the end of the day, man or woman, we're all human beings and we should be respected. Yeah. I absolutely love that. Very, very exactly. nice stuff there. Yeah. yeah, it rounds up your, 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 um, your sentiments very well. You know, because we, we, we also come from a generation that says a man must be tough, you know. So I, um, I'd love to ask you, um, is it cool to care? Is, is, it, uh, is it okay to come across as a man who is, uh, who is sensitive? The old me would have said, nah, it's not cool to care. I would be like, don't worry, man, you just got to be easy. And the old me was such a fool, and I'm so glad I've grown from that, just to see with a yeah. different pair of eyes. By yeah. changing my attitude and caring, empathizing, it's allowed me to understand so much yeah. more. It's allowed me to actually deal with the emotion. And a lot of the time when I do that, the potential anger I used to have from... Nah, like just, I don't need to care about that. But it affects me later on. I clearly cared. That no longer is an issue because I get to address it first up. So I, I, I'm saying to everybody out there, it's yeah. cool to care. You should yeah. care. It's probably the coolest thing you could do right now. It's trending. Get on it. Um, go on to the days <laughs> where, where we should. You know what I mean? It, it should be the new hashtag. It is cool to care. And about yourself especially because that's the one yeah. most thing that you should respect. And with yeah. that, you will then learn to be able to respect everybody else around you in the world. What do you Definitely. think? 
I think uh, caring, uh, being a caring man is, is the in thing. <laughs> if you still don't care, then you're outdated. You need some, uh, some upgrade, you know. <laughs> but um, on a serious note, I, I think to care, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a concept that I love also from the, from the Bible. I love the Bible. Uh, there's, there's where the Bible talks about the, the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, where the Bible says, I think it's Paul, he says the fruit of the Spirit is love. It's patient, it's kindness, it's faithfulness, it's, uh, it, it's, um, it's being patient with other people, you know, it's being kind, it's being humble. So for me, that verse, it just embodies what a modern man should be, you know, you should be, we should be caring men, we should be loving men, you know, women at work, they need to be, uh, uh, to be at peace with the fact that if I have a serious problem, I can come to, I can come to you, you know, I can come to Ryle, I can speak with Umuzi, you know, I can, I, 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 I can uh, stand emotionally naked before him and I know he's not going to take advantage of me, you know. So we need to get to that point where we are so caring and genuine and gentle and, 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 and loving and kind, you know. Um, many people here are, are, are talking about how difficult it is to love when you do not uh, when you are hurting and you 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 do not feel like uh, you are loved yourself, you know. So I I, I feel like um, we need that help also from God, you know. Uh, uh, um, whatever your spirituality is, I've, I've chosen uh, Christianity and I've chosen to live or try to live by the principles of the Bible. The Bible tells us to love one another. You know, you can't help, you can't hurt somebody that you love. You can't uh, mistreat somebody. You can't make somebody feel small, you know. Um, the reason we hurt other people and the reason we, we walk around with unforgiveness in our hearts, I think what I've tried to um, understand is that the reason we walk around with hurt and, and, um, and unforgiveness is because we feel like if you forgive someone who's hurt you, you feel like they are getting away with murder. So, it, so, you, so, so you therefore hurt yourself by holding on to this anger and you, 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 your, 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 your whole perspective about life, it begins to be, uh, to be messed up because now you, you, you look at people and, and, and when you are hurt, this is one thing I, I read somewhere, I think it was uh, Don Miguel Ruiz in his book, The Four Agreements, where he says, when you are hurt, you sort of make a vow in your heart, subconsciously or consciously, whichever way. You make a vow to your heart that I will never trust such people again. I will never ever let people walk all over me again. I will never. So you make that a, 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 a vow unconsciously and it goes to your subconscious mind and it begins to play out in your relationships. So you need to get to a point where uh, in order to, to know yourself as a loving gentleman, as a, as, a, as a kind and a gentle heart and a gentle soul, you need to heal your past hurts. You need to confront your, your hurts from previous relationships. Uh, like I said earlier on, people are really hurt out there and their hurt is genuine. So we cannot just come up with some nice motivational speech and think people are going to heal. But um, healing begins with you making a conscious decision that I want to heal. You know, you can't heal unless, when, when you're still holding on to what happened in the past. You need to get to a point where you let go. You know, uh, one of the doctors uh, said sometime, uh, sometime back that... Uh, one of the reasons people hold on to, uh, to hurt is because at some point when you've been hurt for a long time, it begins to become a part of your identity. You begin to identify yourself with your hurt. It begins to be a part of who you think you are. You accept that as part of who you are instead of actually sitting down and confronting it with yourself. Actually, why do I hate, um, I'll just make a controversial example. Why do I hate white people? Why do I hate um, uh, Chinese people? And then you'll find that maybe you read something somewhere that they did this and that to someone, therefore you held on to that anger. And it is playing out. The move is playing out today, but the move was recorded a long time ago. So we need to get to a point where we make a conscious decision to say, I'm letting go. Uh, uh, I'm trusting. There's a, there's a beautiful saying. It says, let go and let God. So I think at some point we need to be able to say, we must let go in order to be this kind and gentle souls that women need. You know, I've, 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 I've spoken with a lot of women. You'd be shocked that uh, women don't want money. We always say women want money, women love money. No, women want companionship. 
women love want want uh, want us to sit down with them to talk to them how was your day you know i read something very interesting in steve uh, in steve harvey's book uh, when a woman comes back from work and say you know what so and so this colleague just bought a, a dress like mine yeah 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 and the man would just say okay stop wearing the dress you know <laughs> but uh, if she goes to uh, her girlfriend be like you know so and so bought a, a dress just like mine it's not the first time really wow you know she's such a cow why did she do that you know so for us we need to learn to be that kind to be the kind of men that our women deserve i i, I think that's my take uh, i can't agree with you more man i think what we're speaking about is something that doesn't necessarily happen overnight um especially when it comes to these past issues these past scores but uh, yeah. these scores are our anchors and in the minute uh, we hold on to them we can't move any further so let go of all of that and and the ship can carry on sailing to to beautiful pastures my, my I, I when I might listen to you the music I'm always I've got this smile on my face because it's just it's it's such an overwhelming feeling just to see someone a genuine man especially someone like you expressing in 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 such a brilliant way My question is maybe and we've spoken a lot about men in general but I want to put this to you specifically how yeah. did you maybe get to this point in your in your life and and how have you looked after yourself to be able to have such a a view and 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 what is your routine how are you even looking after yourself how are you filling up your cup <laughs> you can't give what you don't have um and and there's also a beautiful saying that says you can't a pour from an empty cup So if you are going to um to be able to love other people you must love yourself first you know and uh, there's a there's a beautiful saying South African saying vugu gezu bangene you know uh, so ngiyavuka ngiyageza ngiyabangena um I go to gym I take care of my physical body I read good books I read the bible I read positive uh, 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 books uh, uh, to take care of my mind and um I I I use ingrams for my skin <laughs> <laughs> you know because uh, somebody said something very interesting they said um you are as you feel as good as you look so you take care of yourself nobody's going to take care of you for you so there's a price that you must pay for yourself uh, of course I'm mentioning ingrams on purpose <laughs> uh, what i didn't know is is um is, is the new the, the the hemp oil the hemp oil ingrams a uh, 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 cream for me it's doing wonders because um Uh, I I started uh, uh, you know all of us started with the with the green one the original which I still love by the way but uh, also to just give others the others a try you know but also to just take care of yourself eat a lot of fruits sleep you know I grew up my father would say would say oh are you sleeping during the day now I sleep during the day and I I don't even feel guilty about it because we have to be able to take care of ourselves how do you take care of yourself what's your routine yeah man I mean look uh... <laughs> I, I, it, it's so crazy and and I definitely agree with you and I'll answer this from two aspects aesthetically I think it's it's important in this day and age to to look good and what I mean by look good is is when you look in the mirror are you happy with what you see do you like the you made a line on your face or you 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 appear a certain way something that's yeah. unique about you I think that's what makes us unique and that's the thing that we should be proud of um I never grow here Oh yeah, my face, and there's nothing I can do about that. So I go with it. And yeah, it's the same thing. Do something else. You know, we 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 all dealt with cards that have pros and cons and strengths and weaknesses. But one thing we can always improve on, and for me, I, I mentioned this on the show today, but I really did mean it. And and it might sound silly, but there's so much truth in this. Uh, something as simple as routine, structure, and regime. Yeah. For me, I often try to get out of the poison. Oh the yeah so so I go out into nature I'm buying can for cream tomorrow yay you are saying <laughs> <laughs> try the hemp oil yes. try the hemp oil um, <laughs> I, I, like literally as a structure going into the mountain and and thinking away from the chaos is important for me yeah. um, being in a yeah. space where i can fill up with good energy is really important yeah. for me something at some point i mentioned on the show after i go through my grooming preparing for a show i mean often on expresso in the morning we're waking up bright and early so if yeah. i can get up a head start and 
literally spend some time kind of just prepping my body. I'm always ashy, man. You must see these elbows in the morning. So literally something like putting on lotion, uh, Ingrams in the morning. It's a process where as I'm laundering myself, I'm getting into this mindset. I'm preparing for the day. I'm starting to feel better about myself. I'm starting to get more ready. I'm asserting myself into the world. So by the minute I'm finished up with my regime, outside and in, I'm able to go and conquer the world. I've got my suit of armor on. And I and I mean that hypothetically as much as I do the physical process of lathering yourself up with something like Ingrams, as example, then putting your clothes on, putting your hat, taking your bag, stepping out the door. Those are the moments that we are stepping onto the diving board before we enter the day, before we, we go yeah. and swim into life and all the chaos it allows us. So if yeah. I'm prepared, if I go into that ocean and I've already trained, I've lathered myself up, I've got a glow, I'm good. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's going to make life easier. That's gonna be yeah. Easier. And drowning with my head under the water or playing in the waves and having the best time of my life. So, yeah, man, that, that to me is important. Just having systems of positivity, something like yes. speaking to someone on the weekly, just, just offloading your emotions, something like expressing yourself through dance, through movement, through painting. Find that thing where you can just be you without any judgment. That is how yeah. I look after myself. That's my yeah. self-care regime. And I must say on top of that, just to add, seeing as we are giving something cool away, and it's an Ingram sampler, for anybody that's yeah. wondering. So keep wrapping up those comments, guys. Um, I've found to really love the tissue oil. I'm someone that from a young age be playing in the bushes and stuff. And I've, I've always had these yeah. like scars on my face and everywhere in my yeah. body just from being a rough kid. So the tissue oil in the Ingrams now is awesome because it has the healing factor. So again, that spiritual process of the tissue oil healing my scars and those figurative scars we spoke about is something that I tie into that process of Forget about that. I've healed the boy. You're now becoming a man. Yes, remember the past for what it was, but now we can look towards the future. And those scars are a great reminder, as much as I am yeah. trying to heal it, of that growth and progression that we've made. So that process yeah. for me, that, that self-care routine is, is, is vital. It's, it's what makes me new. Somebody, somebody once said, uh, dress like you want to be addressed. Dress like you want to be addressed. Yes, I love yes, that. Yes. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to wake well, up tomorrow this... morning with a suit and you're going to call me, good morning, sir. <laughs> exactly my point. <laughs> so you can't dress like a hobo okay. and then expect to so be treated my, my like thing a for you was, I, I wanted to ask you, I, I don't get yeah. enough time with you and, and you're someone that even me, I aspire to, you, you, you inspire me, someone that you're acting at something that I'm very really inspired by as well. Um, and and I must you. just say the roles and the looks you play off, I can clearly see you looking after your skin. But more important yeah. to me is uh, what advice do you have for anybody out there that's struggling to be themselves? And, and I, I think you, as someone that's an actor, you've gone above and beyond. Not only have you figured out yourself, but you're playing other characters at the same time, exploring yeah. other roles. But not yeah. everybody is, is, is blessed to really have the opportunity of, been brought up in an environment where they can be themselves maybe yeah. parents have some impact on that what would be your advice to just anybody i mean going through the motions becoming all the way to a family man now advice on how to bravely wear your skin um <clears throat> I, I would say uh that, that I, I once read something very beautiful somebody once said if there's something you don't like about yourself change it if you can't accept it there are things about ourselves that we cannot change. Therefore, we need to accept them. Um, I cannot change my, some of my scars, you know. Um, so I've, I, I began to accept my scar as, 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 part of my, uh, as part of my identity, you know. So instead of feeling bad about something that you cannot change, accept it and love it for what it is. Uh, also realize the blessing you have in what you have and in who you are. Uh, growing up, I used to have very skinny legs. <laughs> my, my mother used to call me Sticks Morewa. <laughs> so, you know, so when, when I grew up, I, I felt very bad about being in my own skin as a person because I was always conscious 
of my skinny legs uh, until I realized that, you know what, actually, there's somebody without legs out there who really wishes they could have at least skinny legs. So I, I'm already like 50% there. I already have skinny legs, so I might as well, you know, celebrate them, you know. So I, I, I think if there's something you don't like about yourself, some people have got bigger figures, they wish they were skinny, but they'll never be skinny because that's how they are created. So instead of wanting to be like uh, somebody else, Angelina Jolie, look at yourself for who you are and, and count your blessings. You know, I was um, talking to my cousin, Ului, uh, today. We were just talking about how much we are blessed, but we don't see it because we keep looking at what we don't have, you know? And most of us are not millionaires, but we, we have salaries. We, we can take care of our families. So I, I think one of the biggest ways of being comfortable in your skin is actually counting your blessings, you know? Um, there are people out there with uh, serious sicknesses that they cannot change. Here I am. I don't have any sickness and disease, but I'm complaining about skinny legs, you know? So sometimes we just need to be, uh, uh, to be grateful for what we have. Yes, it may not be the best. We may not look like supermodels, but you've got good health. You've got uh, air in your lungs. You've got food in your stomach. Be grateful, you know? So sometimes I think we look too much at what we don't have and we don't, uh, we forget to look at what we do have. Everybody has a strength and a weakness. And like yes. you said, we can focus on our weaknesses or we can focus on our strength. We can yes. live in both worlds and it's, it's, yeah. it's our choice. I, I think yeah. for me, it's, uh, it, it, I love what you said. To, to just maybe add to that, that in this day and age, now more than ever, the rules have completely changed. Everybody's breaking yeah. them. And the people that I see that are living their life most passionately, that are the most successful, and I don't mean making the most money, I mean success in terms of pure happiness, just enjoying every minute of their life. It's because, yes, they've counted their blessings, but number two, they've realized what their blessings are. They've spent time looking within and being proud and celebrating their uniqueness. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? The fact that I have small ears, I need to celebrate that. Why am I hiding <laughs> under cactus example? You know what I mean? I'm like, these are my ears. No one else can have yeah. ears like this. So, you know what I mean? I've already got one up on you. So if I'm ever going to compare myself to anybody, I can compare my weaknesses or I can compare my strengths. And, and, and with that, it's just to say that we have so many strengths. If you're watching this right now, that is already your strength. You have the ability to see, to learn, to hear, to understand, and to make yeah. a change. And I think yeah. now there's so many numbers out there. There's not yeah. enough of you. And I'm speaking to you. You watching this right now. The yeah. world needs more of your life because we've got everybody yeah. else's. It is already a movie. It is already a nature boy. But I want to see everybody else. I want to see the comment, the guys commenting right now. I want to see the next Dayan Dante. Who's who are you, man? Like be you truly, Mabusi. Who's the next Mabusi? That's who I want to see because I yeah. promise you, this, this world I realize this as a fact, and you can quote me on it. Everybody, yeah. and every one of you, has something beautiful. It's up to you to figure out what that is, so you can share it with the world, so that people like us can learn and grow. That's what I want yeah. to see, man. And that's what I think is is an option now. A few years ago, maybe 20, 30 years ago even, that wasn't an option at all. You had to be yeah. a doctor. You had to be yeah. an accountant. You had to be a <clears> job <throat> that was preordained. You could not just be you. In this day and age, you can be anything you want and you can actually sustain yourself doing it. If you love sneakers, you can become a sneakerhead, start a page, and, and, and that can be your life. Yeah. You need to be passionate and you need to love it. No one else does. And you need to celebrate yeah. your uniqueness right now and the beautiful skin that we are in, man. Yeah. You know, you know, my brother, one of the things that I've discovered that are very important in life, I just want to say this before we wrap up, um, is the most important conversation you will ever have in life is the conversation you have with yourself. The things you say to yourself when no, uh, nobody is listening, uh, the things you say to yourself, how you see yourself, the the things you promise yourself. You know, uh, when I had nothing um, as a young person, uh, ninety percent of what I have today, I said it back then when I was eighteen years, nineteen years old. Um, when I discovered the importance of reading, uh, one of the things that I came across was the importance of affirmations. 
what you affirm to yourself, uh, the things you say to yourself. I, 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 I always say, even my friends know that when, when they are around me, they, they, you, can't, you can't even joke about a, a, a bad thing, say, say something bad about yourself, even jokingly. You can't joke with negativity because the words you speak they are like, uh, 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 um, they, they, they will come back to you, you know. So you are creating with the power of your words. So what are you saying to yourself? Are you saying you're an amazing person? Are you saying you are, yes, I've been saying I'm, I'm a millionaire. It's coming, it's coming. It's not a head, but it's coming. <laughs> you know, but that is one of the most important conversations you'll ever have. How you talk to yourself. Some of my friends used to say, hey, Umuz is weird. Because of all the things I used to say when I had nothing. I used to say, you know what? I'm going to have a beautiful house. I'm going to have a beautiful wife. I'm going to have a, a, a God-loving kids. My kids are going to love God. That is happening today because I said it. So instead of always saying negative things about yourself, bad things about yourself, uh, hurtful things to yourself about yourself, I mean, it's time to change the script. If you want to change the, 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 the end credits, you better change the script writer. Uh, how, what you say to yourself. What are you going to have? How, how, how are you? Just wake up and say, oh, I am amazing. I am awesome. I am handsome. I'm beautiful. I am gorgeous. You know, say all those things to yourself about yourself because even if the world is not saying them to you, you've already said them to yourself. You know, you won't try to be somebody else when you begin to realize the power of creation that is in your town. Start speaking positively to yourself about yourself. Any better. Literally living it out right now, man. It's been such a good chat with you. It's always, always a pleasure. I think that's like something what? that uh, should be a continual conversation. I think for everybody yeah, listening as well, please don't think that this will be it. This should go out to your community, the people you're around as well, and 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 yeah. the men in your community. Let's start changing the narrative and the conversation. And I know that guys like myself and Uzi also out here always wanting to help, always wanting to listen. And, and like many other guys right now, uh, it's time to make a change. So let's, like Muzi says, take that pen out. Let's start changing that script. <laughs> and not really just finding a new destiny. Man. I tell you, the director. <laughs> I love it, brother. So listen, man, um, the, I believe you're going to do something special. We've got some cool comments that have come through. Um <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we're going to be giving away uh, a hamper from uh, um, uh, 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 Ingrams. Um, but the question is, the, the, the question is I, I, just wanted, I just want you guys to send out comments and tell us how have you been handling um, masculinity? Uh, uh, how, how are you handling being a modern man? What, what, is, what is a modern man for you? How have you been handling that? Um, the best answer will get a hamper and what else? Hamper, a chat from us, and also a thousand rand take a lot voucher uh, to spend yeah. as well. So, yeah, that's going to be pretty cool. Um, obviously, yeah, come through with the answers. And uh, I also just want to say on behalf of everybody that's tuned in, uh, more to everybody that's tuned into this live, guys, thank you so much for, for being a part of this conversation, for being a part of this change as well, and for commenting and sharing. Uh, I've seen some incredible comments here too. Um, for sharing your advice and your opinions. It's so good to see that uh, we all kind of have a similar thinking. So so this is good stuff. We, we, we're starting to make the change right here, right now. So I absolutely yeah. love that. Yeah, yeah. So keep those com uh, comments coming, and then we are going to choose uh, one comment that is going to go home with the hamper. <laughs> so keep those comments coming. Me, I'm hot like a So the best comment is going to be whoever can answer the question of uh, exactly what, what it, it, what it means to be, or have you embraced modern masculinity? And yeah, um, yeah what does it mean to you? I think that's if you can answer that question. Yeah. You comment here. <laughs> Somebody, where do we comment? Uh, what we need to hear more often. Okay. Me, I'm hot like a hito. I like that one but it's not going to win. <laughs> Respecting all humans is the way the modern man is the way of the modern man. Okay, that's 10 V, 10 V8. 10 V8, yeah. Uh, thank you for your time, guys. Mabusi. Thank you, Mabusi. Thank you for 
thank you for you know we 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 appreciate positive feedback from women as men maybe this is uh, the time to also say this um i think one of the very negative narratives that we receive from women is 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 always um uh, women that are that have bad attitude bad habits and then they begin to say that's being a strong woman we also need at some point to define what is a strong woman being uh, being toxic and being rude uh, and 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 just walking over people it doesn't make you a strong woman but what are the qualities of a strong woman maybe that's one of the things we need to talk about being a modern man for me is by self is by being selfless and always doing my bit to inspire greatness in others i love that because it's selfless and what do you say that was fizzle eh yeah i really like that um yeah. i saw something also about treating and respecting us like human beings but i i really like what fizzle has to say there guys keep coming through with these comments um and yes i i definitely agree with you music in terms of what it means yeah. and, and and being a strong woman as well especially now that you're seeing so much more of it in this day and age which i'm all for yes please bring it on i love the fact that women like we were mentioning earlier or or more assertive uh expressing their strengths as well and i think for guys it's an intimidating place uh, if you think it could be but to be very honest uh, at the end of the day you just got to be you and you just got to be honest uh there's, yeah. there's no easier way to to engage or to be a human being in this day and age um have you seen a better comment that what five less to say though uh, musi because i absolutely like that one eh i'll put that on your shoulders because uh, there are so many beautiful comments here so i'll make you choose so that people don't beat me they beat you <laughs> <laughs> look man I, i wish we could just give it to everybody um I I'm I'm busy scrolling through just to see if I can see anything else and I must say everybody has some incredible stuff to say but Faisal just short simple sweet really summed it up for me um yeah, I would say Faisal, Faisal from people. mother of them tweenies who said modern masculinity is a man who loves himself loves god respects humanity yeah. fully embraces himself and is confident in his masculinity yeah and nice. I I think uh, Faisal CPT um I give it to him um what the reason let me qualify why I'm I'm giving it to him he says being a modern man for me is by being selfless and always doing my bit to inspire greatness in others for me selflessness is always a way to go um if you look at the at great leaders like Babu Nelson Mandela he is one of the greatest men because he was selfless he he gave himself up so that others could benefit so if somebody says uh it's about being selfless and always inspiring greatness in others for me it is a hamper <laughs> i think i i i think uh, that's the one for me as well are we going to call it eh yeah 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 but i also just wanted there there was a comment a beautiful comment from somebody who i'm, I'm sorry i forgot the name but uh, you asked what is the role of women in grooming a boy child um for me i would say uh, women are very sensitive uh what tends to happen most of the time is they tend to to be easy on the boy you know um if you are going to raise a strong great man they need to suffer not in a bad way but they need their fair share of challenges as young boys so don't make it bad for them give them uh, responsibilities in the house you know and and uh, once you say something as a parent once you tell your child if you do this this is what's going to happen that's what must happen when they start crying don't start feeling sorry for them and say oh shame my child you know um i think it's about being tough on the boys uh, and on the girls as well because we are living in a world i don't really like the term gender fluidity and all those uh, uh, terms that modern terms but we are living in an age where if you do something for boys then you must do them for girls as well because they live in the same society but um i i i think uh, to answer you uh, i think it was a lady i think to answer you siswami i would say uh, don't be afraid of being tough on the little boy if you want him to be a man tomorrow if you want him to have his own household and 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 be able to make uh, decisive decisions in his house without always running to mommy and asking mommy what should i do so make them strong men uh, besabangane 
Um, one of the things I do for my daughters, I always tell them uh, to read the book of Proverbs every day. There are 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs. So uh, as young as they are, they read a chapter of Proverbs every day so that when they are older, they will be wiser women who can make their own decisions. So to answer you, I would say give them 